Hello, everyone. Thank you for taking the time today. My name is Rob Kobielski, hosting today's event. I'm joined by Mike Melanger of AMS360, who will be leading the technical presentation in just a moment. Attending today's event are quite a number of industry professionals from both the Canada, both Canada and the US. And we also have some students and faculty of the CAD CAM program at St. Clair College joining us today. So welcome everybody. Having a quick look at today's agenda, you're gonna see that we're gonna keep this quite concise. Uh, you can build quite a lot of automation from today's content, and we hope to see you incorporate this learning in your programming practices. We welcome your feedback and we'll monitor questions throughout this presentation by having you all use the questions tab on the webinar panel. Please note that your microphones will remain muted for the duration of this presentation. Uh, but as I said, I will document these questions and we will return to them just after the technical presentation. So without further ado, I'm gonna pass on the mic over to Mike. Thank you. Hi everyone. So this is the part that we are going to be looking at today. It has several operations, including drilling involving regular type holes, as well as holes with multiple diameters and features. I'm going to create some single tool paths then we are going to create some drilling automation to show you how you can streamline your process. So let's get started. We are going to begin with creating tool paths for these yellow clearance holes. So in PowerMill, in order to create a drilling process, we need to select the surfaces that encompass the hole. And then from our hole feature set tab, we need to create the feature set. The feature set is a, let's call it a wireframe representation of the hole. And essentially after that, the drilling tool path no longer considers the actual surfaced model, but it looks to this feature set or wireframe representation to create the tool paths. So in this form, I'm going to use create compound holes, use active work plane only and find holes in the downward direction. I'm gonna leave the rest and go ahead and hit apply. Now, when I close the form and undraw, we can see that I have this single feature set with the geometry involved with that particular clearance hole. Alternatively, I'm going to delete that feature set and we can select the entire plate, every surface on this job Again, going to our whole feature set tab and using the same process, identify every hole on this plate. So with all of these feature sets created, I am going to address just the yellow clearance holes that I mentioned before. From my home tab, I'm gonna open up my tool database and choose my oops, center drill that I have pre-created. As always in PowerMill, I'm going to set my block and my safe area to ensure I have a safe tool path. From the tool path strategy selector in my drilling form, I'm going to open up the drilling strategy. And choose all of the parameters that I need to center drill this particular style hole. You can choose the, tep the depth for the center drill the start height, the clearance height. And the one important thing to mention is the selection. So with all of these feature sets created, it will go ahead and try to perform this operation on every single one. I can go into my selection tool, choose the correct hole. It identifies the feature sets that fit those parameters. And when I 
calculate the tool path, you can see the center drill goes around and just center drills those particular features. Next, I want to continue with the inch and a quarter clearance drill. So again, back to my tool database, I will find my inch and a quarter clearance drill and open up my drilling strategy once again. You can see the selection stays on that particular feature set because I have not changed or reset anything. I will change the settings to whatever suits my particular setup. This time I'm going to choose through hole as this particular hole goes through the plate. And I will choose a peck depth of one quarter inch. Your settings will obviously vary depending on your setup and your tooling, uh, your complete machining environment. There we go, we have the next and we can even see that the tool path goes through the plate completely. And if I attach the tool very clearly, we can see that it breaks through the bottom. The last process is going to be identifying the top counterboard portion of this feature set and just machining that. So again, Back to my tool database, I'm going to grab a half inch end mill, right back into my drilling strategy. I'm gonna choose helical, keeping it on component top and drill hole to depth. Now, When I set my parameters, I need to remember that the pitch is essentially the step down for the helical tool path. So I'll give a step down of 40 thou. And if I go ahead and calculate on this, you'll see a problem. Clearly, we do not want to circle, circle mill or helical all the way down the bottom as we've already addressed this bottom diameter with the clearance drill. So I'm just going to recycle this. and have a look at the range. So when I choose this range, it's going to allow me to machine only a certain component of this feature set. So by choosing a range of the top component, starting on component number one and ending on component one, we only have toolpath on the top portion of that counterboard area. As you can see, creating drilling strategies are, are not that difficult, but can be a bit time consuming considering the amount of time that some of these tool paths actually take to run. So let's talk about drilling methods now. Drilling methods are a great way to automate operations like this plate type work that a machinist may see on a regular basis. For the first drilling method, I will choose to address these red half inch tapped holes that we have along the plate here. If we undraw the model, we can see we've already got the feature sets created from the first operation. So what I'm going to do is go into my toolpath strategy selector and choose drilling methods just beneath the drilling option in, in the form. I will choose new drilling method and open this up. You can see that this looks quite a bit different than a, a standard drilling strategy form. And I will explain how this, the order of operations work here. First, every process is going to be one hole type that we are going to address one at a time. So for this one, I will actually change the name. and we will see the name update on the process there. Next, we need to identify which holes that we want to 
assigned to this process. So there's a nice little selection drop down menu here where we can choose by a number of different options. For this one, I'm going to choose simply by diameter. That seems to be the most clear cut way. And when I select that particular diameter, you can see only the half inch holes get highlighted. In addition to that, you can give it a range. I will say from a size of 420 thou to a size of 422 thou. Anything that falls within this range will have these strategies applied to the process. So let's talk about the strategies. I'm going to add a strategy and simply choose my center drilling tool and run through this process. Now, all of these settings are the same settings that you would see in, uh, in a regular style toolpath. And I'm just going through and picking them like I were creating the toolpath, although we're not going to be calculating it right now. Okay, with all of your parameters set into this strategy, I'm going to close it. I've got an extra one in here that I'm just going to eliminate. And I will change this name to Center Drill. There we go. For the next strategy, I'm going to do a through drill. I don't have a tool yet for that through drill, so I'm going to jump into my tool database and grab myself a 421 drill. Now I can choose that and run through the same process as before by filling in all of the required fields choosing through hole because this does go all the way through the plate. There we go. All the parameters are set. I will change this name of the strategy. and close. And for the last operation, I will add the actual half inch tap. Again, opening my tool database, pulling the tool that I need. Setting all the parameters once again. Now this one, if we notice this hole size is 421 thou. The tool itself is a half an inch because it is a half an inch tap. So I'm gonna give it a negative verification thickness of 40 thou per side. So we do not see a collision on this particular operation and we can more accurately uh, see if there are any violations. So I will choose tapping from my cycle type. And then for my operation, I will say user defined and give it a depth of 1.25. Now for the pitch, one divided by 13, allow power mill to do the math for me and get an accurate number right in there. name the strategy, and we can close it down. So with those simple steps, I now have a re repeatable process built into the software that I can use at any given time. All I need to do is save off this particular drilling method 
into a place of my choosing. Okay, so I have a custom strategies folder already created, and I'm going to call this my and hit save. So let's run a test here and see if this drilling method actually works on a plate in a clean project. So I've got another power mill opened up here with the plate installed, but as you can see, there is no tool paths, no tools, nothing entered into this whatsoever. So I'm gonna go through my order of operations and say, calculate my block, set my safe heights, and then from my toolpath strategy selector, I can import a strategy or a method in this case. And I'll take a peek into my custom strategies that I created. I'm just going to rename this really quick. And double click that. It opens up this method that I pre-created. And without doing any work, oh, real quick, one step that I did forget was to create my whole feature sets. There we go, with the whole feature sets created, then I will hit apply and I will just wait. There we go. So if I open this up and take a peek, before when we had no tools, no tool paths put into PowerMill, now we can see with a simple import of the model, then an easy feature set creation I run that method and I have my center drill, my drill through the plate, and then my tapping process to tap those holes in a matter of seconds. So let's quickly talk about another method of creating a drilling method. So I'm going to reset everything that we have here. And go back to our other session of power mill that we were working with. Now that we have this drilling method created, maybe we want to include these other holes that we addressed manually in the very beginning when we created the three tool paths. Well, that's really easy to deal with because if I open up the settings to this drilling method, I can add a process. I will minimize the tapped holes because we've already done dealt with that and we're happy with the results. And on this process, I can now choose by diameter the inch and a quarter clearance holes. You can see them highlighted in yellow here. Again, I'm going to give it a minimum and maximum diameter. And then instead of creating the tool paths from scratch, the strategies from scratch, like we did last time, I'm actually going to, I'm actually going to import the tool paths that I already created. So if you notice, once you select on the process from this drop-down menu, you can choose a tool path that's already been created and add it to the process. You can double check your settings, but if you're happy with what you have, you can rename it. And close. There we go. I can add the clearance drill after that. Close, and then again, finally, that helical toolpath to get the counterbore at the very top. 
I can add that in as well. Satisfied with the name so I can close. So now with a previously created tool paths that we did, we simply drag their, uh, import them into the method for use. And you can see as I click on the different processes, it identifies the holes that we're going to um, address in this method. So again, I'm gonna save this off into my strategy folder. We'll call this two hole method and hit save and close that form. One other thing, when we open the strategy selector, we have the option, as you can see right down here, we have uh, a, another form setting to import our own custom strategies. If I click on my custom strategies, we can see the tool paths or the templates that I have built into here. To add these here, it's as simple as going up to this little plus symbol and from your strategy paths, choose the path that you wish to route this to. And whatever folder you put these in will now be recognized in this toolpath strategy form. So let's run another test. So then this empty project of PowerMill, again, let's draw everything. Create our whole feature sets again. And go back to our strategy selector where we choose the two hole method. We can see all the processes in there and apply. You can see it going to work right away. I'll even expand this so we can see all the tool paths and tools being created for us. And there we go. As we can see, everything has been created for us in a matter of seconds, well under a minute, we have all of these tool paths. Now I'm gonna take a step back here for a moment. I'm gonna delete what we have again. And with this plate and the feature set that I've created, I'm gonna go to a custom strategy that I have already made. And this is gonna cover even the light blue or the, or the cyan colored uh, fixturing holes that um, a lot of different companies use, these very specific sized fixturing holes for their machining process with a, you can see a, uh, a finished sized bore with a large tap and then a nice chamfer on the top. With this method that I have, 2D plate method full, you can see I have the previous two operations that I did, as well as the fixturing hole. And I'm gonna run that operation. Okay. So there we go. We have all of these tool paths made with the click of a button created accurately with all the operations repeated. There's no chance of an error because it's just doing exactly what it did last time over and over again. And even for these fixture holes, you can see that there's a, a little bit more operation involved with this. We've got the center drill We've got the tap drill. We've got the rough bore. And if you notice, the rough bore did include the chamfer at the top. So it comes in on an angle, does that rough bore, then a finished bore. 
And then I also add a thread milling process into this where it threads that hole with the 16 millimeter thread mill. Hopefully this sheds some light on drilling methods and what its capabilities are. It's well worth the time invested to create these drilling methods because once you spend the time and do it originally, you will absolutely see the payoff for years to come. Great, great, thank you very much. Perfect, that's the exact slide I was looking for. Thank you, Mike. Uh, we're now moving on to our Q&A portion over here. Uh, the first one I'm just going to toss out is more of a comment uh, more than anything. It was uh, a user was having a sound distortion and didn't see it all too well. Uh, quite possibly a connection. Uh, mine was coming through okay. So I want to let everybody know this session was recorded and we can pass along the link to that one a little bit later. Uh, here's a question for you, Mike. Okay. What? What level of power mill do I need to use these drilling methods? I think it's a user of power mill standard. Um, actually, uh, any variant of power mill will work for this. Um, <clears throat> whether you have standard uh, up to up ultimate, the, the tool is there and available for you to use. Okay. <clears throat> Pardon me. Uh, what about the pockets and the slots on the side of this plate? How would you suggest I machine them? Ah. So the pockets and the slots, um, funny enough that comes up because uh, I'm actually planning a, a second half to this webinar where we talk about uh, feature machining. So there's a newer function, not brand new, but a newer function in uh, PowerMill called feature machining to replace the traditional curve machining. And this next webinar is going to kind of uh, briefly talk about those two methods, the difference between them and the strengths that they both have. So instead of deep diving into that right now, I think we should save that for the next session, which uh, we fully plan on uh, addressing. Good, good, thank you. And I think most people have probably already noticed uh, the, the title, and you can even see it on the uh, the splash screen right over here. This is Power Mill Start to Part uh, 1. So there, it will certainly be followed up, and, and obviously this content, especially when you're building automation, can get kind of lengthy and involved. And we want to maintain uh, a threshold of 30 to 40 minutes for these webinars to keep everybody's attention and keep everything fresh. So we will certainly follow this up in, uh, in short order. Moving on, number three. Are the drilling methods transferable when new versions of power mills come out? Absolutely. That's one of the really nice things about power mill. When you create this method, you can go ahead and use it from version to version. Um, the only thing that I will mention is, uh, let's say you created this drilling method in power mill version 2013. Uh, the forms will change enough and some of the function will change from time to time where a, a drilling method won't recognize a certain feature. So it's definitely worth mentioning that it's transferable, but sometimes if, if a function changes enough in the background, you may need to either repair or rebuild a method. But from my experience, people are getting years and years and years of use out of their drilling methods before any kind of repairs need to be made. Okay, great to hear that. Thank you. Um, can you edit a method after it's been saved? Oh, for sure. Uh, it's very easy. If you remember that form that, that I went into with the drilling methods, it's as simple as going in there, making your changes, and just saving as a new method or even saving over top the uh, current method to, to update the parameters. Okay. Uh, we're, we've got a couple more left, um, so I think we're going to be okay on time. This next one is, how can I share my drilling methods with the rest of the shop floor? Oh, well, there's, uh, I guess there's a number of ways to do that. Whether you, you save this off onto a server, if you guys, if, you know, your, your company has a shared server, and you can just simply direct through the, actually, you know what, let me, uh, let me bring up PowerMill. Uh, Rob, you can see my power mill screen right now, right? Yes, sir. Okay. So when you do go into that strategy selector, all you really need to do is add a path like I was showing you earlier and point it to that server where your drilling methods are. So you see them 
in your custom strategies that you have built right here. And as long as you point it, as long as your computer has access to see wherever it is, you should be able to see all the drilling methods and everybody can use the same templates. Great, thanks for that. And we're coming up on the last one here. This question reads, for the 421 hole, we have left a thickness of minus 40 thou. Uh, I, I believe the user was wondering why. Uh, oh, that was for the tapping hole, I believe. So, and I guess it all depends on the uh, design process. So when you have a, a tapped hole, uh, like this, generally speaking, and I'm not saying everybody works like this, but generally speaking, I, I've seen that people will model this in at 421 thou, which is the tap drill size for the half inch. Um, now, when I go and run the threading operation, the tapping operation for this hole, the, let's see if we can actually, where's my tab, there. So if I attach the tool right there, you can clearly see that this, the diameter of this tool is larger than the diameter of the hole. This is intentional. So by adding a, a verification negative thickness to that strategy form, it's telling PowerMill, hey, we know we're gonna violate by 40 thou per side, and we're considering that okay, but tell me if there's any other violations that are more than that, so we can get that full collision check and and not have any worries. Great, thank you. Uh, another question just came in, and uh, I think I can address this one. Uh, is Power Mill included with Fusion 360? Uh, at the moment, right now, Fusion 360 is an entitlement of Power Mill. So any user who's on a subscription of Power Mill uh, has that entitlement to Fusion 360, which is a, a single user uh, standalone license. So it's a it's a nice little nice little bonus. Um, oh, another question just came in. How did you draw the tool like that? Okay, so this is good because this was uh, kind of on demand. You just quite quickly snapped your tool to your cursor when you were hovering over a hole to make your point. Uh, users asking, how did you do that? Oh, um, if they're talking about when I draw the tool like this on the cursor, uh, there's two ways. There's a shortcut key, Control T. And to kind of go along with that control T, I also use control H to get the crosshairs on the cursor, but control T will draw the cursor on, or the tool on the cursor. And uh, there's also a way, and I never use it this way, but if you go to the view tab, um, yeah, you can draw the tool like that from the actual menu, but control T is a much quicker and easier way to draw it. Okay, and, and to that point, because you know this question has certainly come up, when you snap the tool in wireframe mode to your to your mouse like that, sometimes the holder and all that other data kind of um, uh, clouds your screen or, or hides the the data you're looking to uh, to focus in on. So it, it is noteworthy to say that the display of the holder can be switched off when you're doing this stuff. Absolutely. Ah, very good. Right, like that. Okay, well, that was wonderful. Uh, we, we, we've hit our desired uh, time frame here. We are certainly going to follow this up. And as I said, this uh, session has been recorded. So uh, once we get uh, that, that compiled into a nice uh, shareable format and, um, and, and posted to OneDrive, we'll share the link with everybody. And by all means, uh, you can jot down our contact information here if you wanted to follow up with that. But we do have everybody's email address uh, that is registered for this event. So I thank you very much for your time and look forward to connecting again. Okay. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.